This is the story of Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. Like most small boys, Christopher Robin has toy animals to play with, and they all live together in a wonderful world of make-believe. But his best friend is a bear called Winnie the Pooh, or Pooh for short. Winnie the Pooh lived in an enchanted forest under the name of Sanders, which means he had the name over the door and he lived under it. Now when Pooh heard his Pooh-Koo clock, he knew it was time for something, but he was a bear of very little brain. So when he thought, he thought in the most thoughtful way he could think. Think, think, think. Oh, yes. Time for my stoutness exercise. Pooh stood in front of his mirror and tried to touch his toes. Up, down, and touch the ground. But instead of making him thin, the exercising made Pooh hungry. Pooh's pantry was usually full of honey. Only this time, there was no honey, just a buzzing noise. Pooh said to himself, The only reason for making a buzzing noise that I know of is because you're a bee. And the only reason for being a bee is to make honey. And the only reason for making honey is so I can eat it. Pooh followed the bee to a large tree. There, near the top of the tree, was a beehive full of honey. So Pooh began to climb the tree. Just as Pooh neared the beehive, the branch he was standing on broke, and down went Pooh. It all comes from liking honey so much, I suppose, said Pooh as he landed in a bush. Oh, bother. Pooh brushed the prickles from his nose and decided to go ask Christopher Robin for help. Who found Christopher Robin putting Eeyore's tail back on? Oh, uh, Christopher Robin, I was wondering if you had such a thing as a balloon about you. Sure, Pooh. Here you are. But what do you want a balloon for? Pooh whispered. Honey. But Pooh Bear, you... I do. I shall fly like a bee up to the honey tree, see? But Pooh... You can't fool the bees that way. I can, if I roll around in the mud until I'm black all over. There. Isn't that a clever disguise? What are you supposed to be, Pooh? A little black rain cloud, of course. Christopher Robin took Pooh and the balloon to the honey tree. Pooh was very excited. Uh, now, would you aim me at the bees, please? Christopher let go of Boo, and the bear floated right up to the beehive. But the bees weren't happy to see him. Dangling by the balloon string, Winnie the Pooh called down. Christopher Robin, I think the bees suspect something. I think it would help with the deception if you would open your umbrella and say, Tut, tut, it looks like rain. So Christopher Robin paced back and forth with an umbrella over his head, saying, Tut, tut, it looks like rain. And Pooh even tried singing a cloud song. But the bees weren't fooled by any of this, and they burst Pooh Bear's balloon. Pooh fell from the sky. Catch you, Pooh! shouted Christopher Robin, and he did. Oof. When Pooh put his mind to honey, he stuck with it. He went to Rabbit's house and invited himself to lunch. Rabbit knew that Pooh was very hungry, but he still said politely, Uh, would you like some honey, Pooh? And of course Pooh did. 
He ate and ate and ate and ate until he had eaten every last drop of rabbit's honey. Pooh thanked Rabbit and turned to leave. But Pooh's tummy, full of honey, only got halfway out of Rabbit's small, round front door. Oh, help and bother. I'm stuck. Owl stopped by to see the strange sight. Well, if it isn't Pooh Bear. Yes, yes, yes. It seems the entrance to Rabbit's domicile is impassable. <laughs> to be exact, plugged. At the thought of having Pooh stuck at his front door, Rabbit panicked. Oh dear, there's only one thing to do. I'll get Christopher Robin. So Rabbit told Christopher Robin, and Christopher Robin hurried off to get all Pooh's friends. Owl tried to cheer Winnie the Pooh up. You, sir, are stuck. A wedged bear in a great tightness. In a word, irremovable. <laughs> but he didn't make Pooh feel very cheerful. When Christopher Robin saw poor Pooh, he shook his head. Silly old bear. Here, give me your arm and I'll pull you out. Oof, shouted Pooh. It's no use. I'm stuck. Pooh Bear, there's only one thing we can do. Wait for you to get thin again. Oh. Pooh didn't like the idea of getting thin. How long will that take? Gloomy old Eeyore replied, Days, weeks, months, who knows? Oh, bother, said Pooh. So did the Pooh, stuck until he could get thin. All Pooh's friends sat down to wait. Kanga brought some food and they all had a picnic lunch. All except Pooh, that is. No food for him until he came unstuck. When night came, Kanga brought a warm shawl to keep Pooh from getting cold. Roo went to sleep and so did the Pooh Bear while Kanga sang a lullaby. Day after day, night after night, all of Pooh's friends did what they could to help. And then one morning, when Rabbit was beginning to think that he might never be able to use his front door again, it happened. He budged! Hooray! Christopher Crabbin! Uh, Christopher Rabbin! He bidged! He badged! He budged! And uh, today is the day! Everyone in the Hundred Acre Wood came running to help free Pooh Bear. From inside his house, Rabbit pushed frantically on his end of Pooh, while outside, everyone else pulled on the other end of Pooh. And, of course, Owl was there to see that things went right. Everyone shouted, Heave ho! Heave ho! And tugged with all their might. They pulled and pushed and strained and tugged until suddenly Pooh popped out of the doorway and flew right over his rescuers and up into a hole in the honey tree. Stuck again, observed Eeyore. Well, at least it's not in my front door, sighed Rabbit happily. Christopher Robin called. Don't worry, Pooh. We'll get you out. But Pooh was quite content to remain stuck. Uh, no hurry. Uh, uh, take your time. For you see, Pooh had landed right in the bee's hive, which was full of delicious honey. Mm, yum, yum. I like being stuck here. Christopher Robin shook his head and grinned. Silly old bear.
Wondering where 